Now that it's 601. That was the first, see, the first thing that people hear is you saying now that it's 601. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about the last three chapters of All Systems Red. But before we get to that, how are you, Dana? Pretty good. Although I think now that I'm looking at my glasses, I'm the wrong camera. Doop, 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 switch. <laughs> hey, there ah, look, look, there I am. Less glare. And have you got the right microphone selected and all that fun well, stuff? Usually you're, you're, you're more... No, I don't. What the heck? What? There, now, see, the heck came through and you sounded better. I'll take your word for it. I can't tell. All I hear is like me. Usually you complain when I, when I, when I have the wrong microphone. You're like, you don't sound right. Actually, I meant to ask you about it before, but I forgot. Because what, I think I've told you before, and I have no idea what the issue is. But there are times... Fortunately, it's never happened while we're like doing a show, but usually when we're doing a show, you're on the snowball microphone. But sometimes if we're just like in a Zoom call, just, you know, privately just hanging out and you're on your laptop there uh, and you're not on the snowball microphone, you're just on the, the built in laptop mic, you sound so awful and I can barely hear you and I have no idea what the issue is with that <laughs> so it's like sometimes but not all the time yeah it's yeah exactly because more most of the time i can hear you fine but sometimes it's like yeah it's i and I, I again i have no idea what the issue would possibly be um well simulo so. you might have been not late but we were a little bit late it was kind Just of my, it was kind of my fault because we were, we were dealing with i i went in to um pull up uh y'all on YouTube so that I could see the chat. And YouTube was like, you have a warning. I was like, a warning? Like, like a, you put something bad on YouTube. And I'm just like, you, you done wrong. Well, I was just like, I was like, I did just put up a swear jar. Maybe I swore more than I was supposed to. But no, it wasn't that. It was the yeah. Saturday 6 most recently. Last, last, last weekend, Saturday 6. Because apparently, like, go ahead. Apparently, the news about the Great Barrier Reef is shocking to some people or something. They literally, the bit that was flagged was my link to the Good News Network. Oh no. Oh no, we can't have that. Well, can't have no, no, not. Can't have no good news. Apparently the, the, the song, the original version of the song was Don't know Nobody, Don't Nobody Bring Me No Good News. <laughs> anyway. Now, now you'll know better than to, to link to the, the nefarious Good News Network. I know. Oh, those good newsers. Oh. But that's all taken care of. It's all resolved. So. I know. But now, something bad has happened. What has happened, Dana? I ate the last of the potatoes. Oh, Dana, I'm so sorry. But that's what, that's what potatoes are here for. I know, and I... But... And I shouldn't have more potatoes. I've had, I've had as many potatoes mm -hmm. I've, I've yes. had. In my... Listen, I will make a deal with you. You'll make a deal with me? What's the deal? Before I make because... it, I want to know what the deal is. I don't make no open-ended deals. Do you know this? It's not an open-ended deal. It's a very specific deal. It's just, right. it's just, it's, it's, it's just meant to be mutually supportive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've already had dinner, mm -hmm. and our and my dinner also had was it was a potato-based dish. Indeed. So I won't have anything more tonight. If you won't have anything more tonight, we can, we will be solidarity. We'll be in, in, in our, our, our no more eating for the rest of the night. So that means if I have something more tonight then you can have something more tonight. I could, but I won't. Cause I'm done. I'm whether you eat more tonight or not, I'm done, but I'm just saying you will not be alone. Like if you, if you decide that you want to eat more, if you feel like you want to eat more later, but you know, you shouldn't just know that I will be here also not eating for the rest of the night. So I'm not alone. You are here with me. Yes. Though we're far apart. Exactly. See, it's like the song See, was okay, written for the, this very. Oh, 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 I will accept this deal if you sing it.
<sighs> I'm going to have to look up the lyrics. It's been a long time since I've You don't have to sing the whole song, Steve. Jeez, just that part. Come on. Okay, so how does it? It's You Are Not Alone. I Am Here With You. Though We're Far Apart. What's And then what's the next line? It rhymes, you genius. You're, still... you're always in my heart. There you Is go. Go for it. You're all, you're. Just, just those four lines. There you go. You're always in my heart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You are not alone. I am here with you. Though we're far apart, you're always in my heart. Steve, are you singing to me or to my potatoes? You are. To you. <laughs> to you. Why I would have been waiting for that. Why would I sing to your eating ass potatoes? Your potatoes are Cause gone. Because there, there are more in the freezer. Well, I wasn't singing. To, I didn't even know those existed. For all I knew, those were the only ones, the ones that you just ate. You, 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 just, you just ate. Let's go with that form of the verb. You just ate. <laughs> You're trying to rub it in, but I don't care. <laughs> all right. So. <sighs> Woo. So. Let's talk about Murderbot. Let's talk about the final three chapters of the first part of the Murderbot Diaries, all systems read. And now, and, and, and or as, as I now refer to this book, all chapters read. Dun, da, da. That is very clever of you, Steve. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I've been waiting for three shows to use that. So, Did you really think of it at the beginning and now you've just been waiting this whole time? A actually, I just thought of it like 10 seconds okay. ago. Okay. I was going to say, because that's like, what, a month and a half? Golly. You're so patient. Actually, you're not because you just thought of it. But... Had but, you thought of it before, it would be evidence of your patience. Anyway. Well, yeah. It's uh, it, it's not so much the patience that would be impressive, but the memory. I mean, I'm perfectly capable of thinking of a bit and 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 going, oh, in three months, <laughs> you know, that's that'll be the perfect time to use it. And then waiting and doing it. That's not a challenge for me at all. But it's remembering to do it when the time comes. <laughs> that's, oh, that's what it's like. Oh, shit, I was going to do that thing. I th I've been waiting for three months. Anyway. So it really is. So they, they, uh, the, our, our intrepid team of heroes who have been sent to this planet on some sort of survey mission, uh, their fellow surveyors on the other side of the planet have been horribly murdered, shockingly destroyed. And they are, and they themselves are threatened as well by these, this, this secret survey group that these is on the planet bodies. as well. Nefarious baddies, the evil survey group, as they are called, um, with their security bots that either worked for them from the start or have been reprogrammed after being collected from the habitat of the survey that they destroyed. We saw that they also they tried to reprogram our protagonist murder bot, but failed. So now Murderbot and its humans, our protagonists, are kind of on the run. Um, but they are at a point now at the beginning of uh, chapter six where they are reaching out to the evil survey team to try to come to some sort of arrangement. Um, because I guess they realize they can't run forever. So, and, and of course, and also the, um, you know, our murder bot has, has hacked its governor module, so it doesn't have to obey orders. And now it's humans know about it, but for the most part, they seem accepting of it, you know, and they want to treat murder bot like a person, person. which murder bot feels kind of weird about. Um, but I mean, like, likes the idea yeah. of not being treated like crap. Yeah. But sure. Please don't talk to me about feelings. I don't want to talk about feelings. I just want to watch TV. Right. Right. So they are, they're going to, to have like some sort of rendezvous with the evil survey group. Right. Um, and chapter six is basically them making plans and figuring out how they're going to go about this. And uh, that all dying horribly. Yeah, what they need to worry about, and which one of which of them is going to go to, you know, to do this meeting, um, and 
the uh, so and Murderbot kind of takes the lead a little bit as the security unit and says, "Okay, I, I know, I know what to do. So let's let's arrange a meeting." So they arrange a meeting with Evil Survey. They reach out to them like through the computer network or whatever. Um, and Doctor Mensa, who is the leader of the human group, goes with Murderbot to meet with the representatives of the Evil Survey team. And the plan is to um, to bluff the Evil Survey team uh, to get them to leave their habitat, to make them think that Murderbot and, and, and our humans know more than they actually do about the reasons right. that they're there, to get them to leave their habitat so that one of Gurthin. our guys, so that Gurathan could could. I forget was he want does he want to use their their emergency beacon or does he want to blow it up? I think he uses it. He wants to use it to call in the company to pick them up. Right. Yeah. Which which the the evil survey team doesn't want because they're they're they don't want anybody to know that they're here. So calling in the company to come pick everybody up is not what they want. Um. So that's the plan, but it doesn't go according to plan as big surprise there as it shouldn't, as it shouldn't. And any good story, you know, that I've, I've said this before. I mean, one of the best, one of the best ways to establish tension and establish, uh, to tell like a compelling dramatic story, especially if it's like this sort of action adventure type story is the characters make a plan we in the audience learn what the plan is and then, and then we and we see the characters attempt to carry out the plan and the plan goes wrong like then you're like oh shit now they don't have a plan what do they do now you dun, know dun, like dun. that's an inherently that's an inherently compelling situation and even though it can be formulaic it still usually works like it's one of those instances where that there's a reason why this is a formula because if you do it right it usually works um so the the first way the plan goes awry is um murderbot goes as the sort of representative of its group to talk to to parlay with uh, the representatives of the evil survey group and they want dr mensa to come over and basically like be their hostage and murderbot is like oh this wasn't part of the plan they weren't supposed to we, we don't want hostages hostages are a bad situation yeah, well, because yeah, like because they didn't really, and part part of the 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 thing was they didn't entirely believe the bluff. They kind of called the bluff. They 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 didn't just accept. They it. didn't oh, fully they, buy it. Yeah, they know why we're here. We better you know come to some arrangement. Like no, that's they they didn't buy it. So they said have Doctor Mensa come over here, and we want we want them as a hostage. We want her as a hostage. And we'll we're going to send one of our sec units with you to go over to where she's hiding. And get her. <laughs> so Murderbot's like, great. Oh. Yeah, that, that's perfect. Let's do that. And then so Murderbot and this other sec unit are walking back to where Dr. Mensa is. And when they get around the corner so nobody can see them, they have a big fight. And Murderbot wins. And then Dr. Mensa comes up and is like, oh, so this is kind of fucked, huh? Like, there's nobody's this. This is this. Well, this isn't going according to plan, huh? And Murderbot Dan, says, Dan, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. And, and of course, the best part of this was somebody else had said, this is the flaw in the plan. This is where it's all going to go to heck. It was Gurathin, right? It was the one that Murderbot does. Uh -huh, and Murderbot's with. like, yeah. why did Gurathin have to be right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, no, why did it have to be Gurathin? But yeah, in this instance, Gurathin was right. Gurathin said, this is the weakest part of the plan, which is the bluff. And that's where the plan failed. So Murderbot kills the other sec unit. And then has another idea and says, okay, we can still save this, you know, it's still good. It's still good. And Murderbot switches armor with the evil sec unit so that the evil survey team will think that it is their sec unit that has killed Murderbot. And it drags Which Dr. Murderbot Mensa. is figuring it was supposed to do anyhow. Which is, well, Mur yeah, Murderbot figured that was the idea that as soon as they were, uh, out of sight it was going to attack and kill 
So Murderbot grabs a hold of Dr. Mensa, drags her along, makes a big show about like, ah, you're coming with me, you know? You are our prisoner now, for I am evil, just like the rest of these guys. Um, and they do buy that bluff. They do buy that bluff. And uh, meanwhile, Gurathin is over uh, at their, ha has made his way to their uh, beacon. Um, and I guess, so the beacon, because the beacon gets blown up. So is the plan to use the beacon first and then blow it up? Because Gurathin blows it up, right? I don't remember. I don't, because, and some of this, so... Some of this becomes more clear because some some of it um some of what happens becomes clearer as it like as it develops but and then especially as the characters kind of discuss it afterwards like okay that's that's right that's why but we don't get to hear what happens because um everything goes to heck and you know all of a sudden uh murderbot essentially grabs Dr. Mensa and they go over a cliff together. Yeah. Oh, no, I remember. I was just going, I was scanning through, triggering the beacon. It's like, the beacon is like a launch vehicle. Right. So triggering the beacon means basically launching a rocket. And they are, and the beacon is too close to where everybody is. So when Gurathin triggers the beacon and the rocket goes up, like the force of the rocket engine is what causes the, yeah, Sim uh, Simulog has it in the in the chat like the the uh the rocket exhaust the force of the rocket is what destroys everything um and yeah murder yeah, you you're not supposed to be close and they're like okay right. so we're here so how is this gonna work right so Murderbot grabs mensa and they both dive over they dive off a cliff to escape the explosion um and then we get a couple of sort of intervals of Murderbot going offline and then waking up and getting little snatches of what's going on. Um, and then uh, once the the humans are safe, Murderbot just kind of shuts down. And he's like, all right, I guess I'm dead. But of course, not not the case. Murderbot wakes because up. Because there are more books in the series. Because There's there are more, more money books. to be made. Because there are more books in the series. Murderbot wakes up in the at the beginning of the last chapter and has been rebuilt and rejuvenated and, and healed and everything. All better and, now. And at first is worried because it's obviously it's in a cubicle, like that the kind of thing that it uses to to restore it and, and rehab itself. But it, it, it but realizes it belongs to the company. Right. It real it realized that it's back like home, basically. And it gets worried because it's like, oh, my governor module, the humans know about my governor module. But then Murderbot realizes that the governor module is still hacked. Yeah, like, Murderbot goes, boop, boop, boop. It's like oh, it's like, oh, they didn't because you figured it would, you know turn the governor module back on or replace it or whatever. And actually, and none of that's happened. It still has free will. Um, and it wakes up and it gets out of the cubicle and, and all of the, the humans are there. Hey, and, robot. Yeah. And, you know, and, and they have like sort of human clothes for it, like instead of the, the, uh, the armor. suit skin that it, and the armor that it usually wears, they give it like a jumpsuit with uh, the the logo of preservation, which is their colony's name, and uh, you know, and it's like, oh, what's uh, what's going on? And Doctor Mensa says, "Well, we got a court order that says we can take you. Like we we bought you, basically. We, we bought, bought your you contract. From, we bought you from the company. Yeah, we bought you from the company. So you're our sec unit now." And, and, uh, there's like, there's a little exchange between Pinley and one of the representatives of the company where the company's like, you know, you can't do this. We have to purge its memory first and blah, blah, blah. And Pinley says like, well, we have a court order that says we can just take it with us. So we're going to do that. Um, and Dr. Mensa explains, well, we're taking you back with us. You're going to go home with us to our planet and then you can just live there and be a free person. 
and you can do whatever you want. And you don't have to be a sec unit. You don't have to, you know, work for other people like that. If you don't want to, you can, you can do whatever you want. And you can, and Dr. Mensa says, you can stay with me while you're getting on your feet and figuring out what you want to do, you know? And Murderbot's like, that sounds nice, I guess. And it's very sort of like outwardly kind of appreciative, like, oh, okay. Well, well I think, I think it came, for me, it came across more as outwardly, okay, then that's a thing. Kind of like, because th this sort of thing doesn't really happen. Yeah, it's it's like it's it may be in one of the serials, maybe. Yeah, that's right. I, that's right. Murder by I think yeah, it says that like it's like it's like something out of one of those shows I watch. It, this sort of thing doesn't happen in real life. Um. And, but it's also it also tells us through the narration that um. You know going home with the humans and staying with Dr. Mensa for a while. And having Mensa as its guardian. Having Mensa as a guardian, which which Murderbot says guardian just sounds like a nicer word for owner. Yeah. Um, and, and Murderbot says, you know, this is the kind of thing that you're supposed to want, but I don't like being told what to want, you know? Like, I don't, even, even if it's done out of friendship, I just don't like the idea of being expected to live a certain life or be a certain way. That doesn't really work for me. So after the humans are asleep that night, they, they all go like back to the same hotel suite. They're staying in this really nice suite in the hotel. And that night after everybody's either asleep or, or distracted or something, Murderbot sneaks out and talks its way onto a ship like an automated ship that doesn't have any people on it well actually um, i mean it goes it goes through and uh, it goes through a work area that's true yeah and get some clothes and, and get some other clothes yeah and like a knapsack and some stuff so that it can pass as a human like just traveling someplace um and then it talks its way onto a ship and climbs aboard and goes off and, and, and leaves on its own. Um, and at the end of the, the book, it's revealed that it, this, that this is addressed to Dr. Mensa, that this is all sort of a message to Dr. Mensa from Murderbot explaining, ex explaining why it left without saying anything. saying anything. Yeah. Um, and he says, that's why I left you, Dr. Mensa, my favorite human. My favorite human. My favorite human. Um, by the time you get this, I'll be leaving Corporation Rim out of inventory and out of sight. Murderbot end message. And that's the end. Murderbot leaves to go off on more adventures, presumably, I guess, since there have been a bunch more books. Um and and that's it that's the end and find out what it wants on its own um and find out what maybe it wants, yes. you asked uh, a couple things uh sure it'd be great to see that um the the, the face merge that would be kind of fun um and <laughs> yeah, also I had, I had my own thoughts on why murderbot keeps winning fights against other sec units mostly i thought it was because murderbot was expecting the fight and the other sec units were not prepared and also murder were, they were also not prepared for murderbot to be prepared for the fight, if that if that made sense. In each case, yes. the other sec units were expecting to get the drop on Murderbot, and Murderbot was able to turn that around, get the drop on them, so it was like a double surprise. Right, because they did, they didn't they didn't know about Murderbot's hacked governor module, so they governor figured Murderbot would be or the fact be... that they knew, you know, that the, that the group knew in in the first case that right, you know, that that something had gone wrong there, um, and they certainly weren't. Uh, if you remember. Murderbot took down two of the sec units, and Dr. Yes. Mensa took down a third. Yes. Well, and, 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 <laughs> they were not and, expecting that human to take down a sec unit. And also, let's not forget, and Philip Kehoe has a good answer to it, which is that I mean, the real answer is Murderbot is the protagonist. Yeah, that's obviously. That's the real answer. But also, I mean, the, the author does at least go through the motions of having Murderbot get really, really torn up in a couple of these fights. 
Yeah. Like it's it's not just it's not this sort of classic action movie cliche where like, you know, Bruce Willis is in a building that explodes and falls on top of him and he kind of climbs out and just has some dirt on him, but he's fine and goes on and is in the rest of the movie. Um, and a, a few other scritchies. Yeah, you know, it's it's more like, oh, and then I shut down and I thought I was dead, <laughs> but but the humans managed to drag me to my cubicle and I'm actually okay. And by the way, it's like a few days later because it took me that long to recuperate after that fight. Yeah. Like, you know, it's so, even though it is sort of a plot armor uh, yes. situation, it's not quite as... It's a, internally a, a, consistent. It's not as hand-waved as it might have been. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, Donna, absolutely. I like that they were able to bond over the serials. I have some, I have some TV you can watch. Oh, okay, come on on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Philip, yes, I don't know about that. I, the, saying that the company, might, maybe the company has a familiar name. I mean, unle unless it's like, uh, what's the, uh, from Alien, the Waitani Corporation? <laughs> I mean. My, my thought, it was like, more that Murderbot is not paid to care about that. Or programmed yeah. to care about that, right? Or that it's just it's the comp the company. It's 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 meant to be generic. It's meant to be universal. You know, any that's just the company. That's just the way companies you know, do things. It's yeah. the way it's yeah. It doesn't really make a difference which particular company it is. They're all kind of the same. Yeah, you, you and know? you get the idea that Murderbot has interacted with sec units from other companies, and that and that there is some similarity. Yeah. Um. I didn't quite get that. I, I did think, you know, Mensa, I, I think there was, you know, you're coming home with us. Um, I think th that was somewhat paternalistic, but also not unreasonably so. Because keep in mind that the other humans or, or had been told that um, Murderbot's governor module was not working. So there are literally other people, other humans out there who are aware of this. Now, granted, they've been, you know, shown to be criminals and maybe that removes them. Maybe that removes them as a threat. Maybe nobody will believe them, but they can't be sure of that. Yeah. And it's important to get Murderbot out of there. And Mensa said to Murderbot, you can stay with me. Yeah, not you have to live with me for the rest of not, your life. And, and, or not even you will stay with me. Like, you'll stay with me like it's decided. But yeah, as, like if Murderbot had gotten there, if Murderbot had gone with them and they'd gotten home and Murderbot had said, actually, I think I'm going to stay at a hotel instead. And, like, and it was even, yeah. it was even, uh, she even spelled it out as you can stay with me. And it was a temporary arrangement until, you know, you figure out what you want to figure do. out. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought it was, I thought it, it came across to me more like an offer, but at the same time to somewhat to, to, to a creature like Murderbot that is really still developing its own sense of identity that, um, first of all, you know, that, that's like, okay, no, I don't want to do this. But at the same time, navigating that conversation of, okay, I appreciate this, but I think I want to go off on my own. It's not that I, you know, I, but not wanting to hurt your feelings. Let's just avoid that conversation to leave. <laughs> Murderbot, no one, no one to talk about, you know, apologies, yeah. conversations, intentions. Nope, we're just going to go. <laughs> yeah. So well, given... I think it was, as much, it was as much a cop out on Murderbot's part as anything else, which is perfectly fine. Given what we've seen of it throughout the story, its decision at the end makes sense. You know, it doesn't feel like contrived or out of nowhere or like, yeah. oh God, why didn't Murderbot just accept the offer? Like it, it, it feels consistent and right for it to do that but at the same time it does like i don't think it reflects poorly on dr mensa or the humans yeah. i mean i guess you could you could say like maybe it comes across as maternalistic or or, or what have you but I, and i think i, I don't think really the think of the word paternalistic i think uh 255 ad i think that i think that's more accurate the, the, but the I idea think, of well just because, I, I mean go ahead. just because uh mensa is female that doesn't make it maternalistic inherently um it you know that that sort of guardianship control is more of what we would consider paternal that 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 sense of control over it um and yeah presumably it is at her discretion but what we've seen before is that she is more she's she's a good leader in the sense that she's not a micromanager at all and so i think there's reason to see her discretion as being fairly liberal so, yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, it's sort of like, what else was Mensa supposed to do? You know, I mean, clearly, because of the unique things about Murderbot, it wouldn't have seemed right to just turn it back over to the company to have its memory erased and turn it back into yeah. a sec unit, you know? Um, you know, clearly they wanted to get it out of there. Yes. And, you know, and it's like, what else? So you, you get it out of there and then what? Just, you know, stuff some cash and a bus ticket in its pocket and say, good luck. You know, no, the idea of, you know, you come home with us. We'll look after you. You can, you can live, you can live with me for a little while until you get, I mean, it's not, you know, it's, it's yeah. meant as like, like you said, it's like an offer. It's not a demand. Yeah. And, and that's, I that's don't think it reflects poorly really on them think, at all. I really think that it was an offer and that, um, but at the same time, I think uh, Murderbot realizes that it's a very comfortable offer. It'll be really easy to just hang out with Dr. Mensa and do whatever needed done around the farm and watch serials when something wasn't needed done all, all around the farm. Murderbot, that would be easier, honestly. Sure. Murderbot would get to watch a lot of serials. And Dr. Mensa would let that happen. I don't think Dr. I think Dr. Mensa, knowing that Murderbot is, you know, new to the whole identity type thing, would just be like, okay, you know, you're not hurting anybody. Yeah. Do what good. you need to do. Yeah. But I think Murderbot is is in the in the process of becoming an individual is, is realizing that that is too much of a temptation. You know, for its own good, don't take this offer. It'll be too easy to just get soft and, and not really become um, a fully realized person. Yeah. So, but again, yeah. I think that I think it, I think if Murderbot had said, I want to go off on my own, I'll keep in touch, I think the rest of the group would have protested some, you know, authentically, but also, oh no, you know, we don't want you to go. Don't, don't feel like you're not welcome. But um, I think Dr. Mensa would totally have understood and supported that decision. Um, yeah, but again, I agree. But again, conversation, social interaction. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, because I, I think the humans that express uh, positive feelings toward Murderbot, I mean, I think they're all being genuine. I don't think any of them yeah. were, I don't think we're meant to read them as like going through the motions or just being polite or whatever. Like, I think that's part of what makes them endearing to Murderbot as well yeah. as to us is that they, really they, seem to, yeah. they seem to genuinely be concerned about what happens to this being who most other people in this world seemingly just regard as a, a toaster. Machine. Yeah, exactly. It's a toaster. It, it's like, it's like, you know, the way, uh, Luke Skywalker treats droids in Star Wars. Like most of, most, most other sort of characters in Star Wars are like, yeah, droids, whatever, who cares? But Luke and Leia and eventually most of the Star Wars heroes, but, it, but initially it's just sort of, you know, Luke is the one who talks to them like people and treats them like people and, you know, is nice to them, even though and yet, supposedly and yet they're not does people. does not do the same with his X-Wing or his lightsaber or other machines. Right, oh, right. It's the droids. It's the ones that have voices. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, so for the humans in this story to treat Murderbot this way, like it's, that's part of what makes them the good guys is that they're unusual. They, uh -huh. they're like, no, we're not going to be, we're not going to treat it like a machine. We're going to treat it like a person. Yeah. Whether it likes it or not, <laughs> you know. And and that's that's some of what makes the story so amusing is like you know they're they're doing this what and essentially what we have gotten used to through stories like Star Wars, you know, treating a a not quite person as though it's a person, and then yes. you know the, the becoming of a person, you know, not becoming human but becoming a person, you know, a, a fully realized individual, um, with you know individual desires and goals and, and, you know, ideas and things. Um, yeah. yeah. It's fun. And again, that is something that is a trope in science fiction. There's, there is a certain amount of formula to it, but if it's done well, it almost always works. Like there are so many characters of this same rough type in popular science fiction. Like you, 
Data in Star Trek TNG, uh, the holographic Doctor in Star Trek Voyager. I mentioned a couple times Isaac from the Orville. Broadly speaking, all this they, they have the exact same character arc, which is they are an artificial life form that are incapable of experiencing the full range of human experience, but their friends treat them equally and treat them like a person and respect their rights and respect their choices as individuals. And gradually throughout the course of their story, they grow and they become more of a person, you know, and that's what we see starting to happen with Murderbot in this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and it's, and it's compelling, you know, if, when it's done right, it's always a compelling story. Yeah. And I mean, it, even older is the story of it not going that way because i mean that's frankenstein that's true frankenstein was not accepted yeah mm -hmm. but yeah. it was also a pushback against that and becoming um an individual on his own terms the creature you know yeah you know the creature deciding yeah. this is what humanity means this is what i'm going to do um yeah i like that she didn't argue when murderbot said it wanted armor but I think it would have been uh, inconsistent for her character to respond otherwise. Yeah. I mean, there is a reason why Murderbot refers Prefers to her the way, it, the, the way it does at the end when it says, you're my favorite human. Like, because Men it's not just that Mensa is the nicest. It's that Mensa is the one that seems to get it more. To than pay attention others. to what it actually yeah. wants. Yeah. Yeah. When it's, when it's, uncomfortable being in the group and having to take its face shield off and talk to them like mensa picks up on that and is like okay yeah. you know you can you, we don't need to force you to do that you know i don't know if y'all have noticed but i'm like i'm playing with it. my hair's just really like i had it up all day and then i took it down and i'm just like whatever whatever was like in it when i if i had like extra like some of the conditioner i got left in or whatever it's, <laughs> Normally it's not this nice. Ah, I'm enjoying it. So I don't really have anything else to say. I liked the story. It was enjoyable. Yay. I liked it. I didn't love it. I liked it. I think we talked about what was this. the last book that you loved? The last book that I loved. <laughs> I honestly, I mean, I'm drawing a blank. Like, I mean, I like, I would say, uh, I I know I've read books since this one that I have loved, but the one that jumped to mind as far as like a novel or like a, a work of fiction, um, The Adventures of Cavalier and Clay, which I read like 15 years ago. <laughs> like, um, I really love that. But, I mean, see, I don't really draw, like, I mean, it doesn't need to be a book for me, you know what I mean? Like, there are works of fiction, whether they're TV shows or movies or whatever, you know, like, a story is a story. And, yeah, I know, but you are, yeah. you are much more often drawn to um, TV or movies than other media. That's true. And there are, there are things about the way this is written that keep me from loving it. You know, like we talked about in the last show, like a lot of the language is extremely technical. Um, a lot of the descriptions, the, the action descriptions are extremely technical and filled with like little details about, okay, this character is doing this. And before they can do that, they have to do this and they can't do this. And that's why they're doing this. And it's, it's very sort of, there's Dry. just a lot, there's just a lot going on and it's a lot of, okay, this happened and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened. And, then. and there's not a lot of elegance or beauty to the voice, you know, like it, it's not really a pleasure to read in terms of the, the prose style. Um, and that keeps me from really embracing it. Uh, that the plot... I see, I don't, I see that Go as ahead. a strength. Yeah. I, I, I don't see how, that could possibly be a strength, but whatever. Because it's in um, Murderbot's voice. And Murderbot doesn't that, have an elegant voice. It's 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 the voice that's consistent with the character. This is the way Murderbot I understand. Um, perceives things. And and, I, and it's I, I and I, I I I will I will agree with you, but it doesn't make it any more fun to read. 
Oh, or, I, or any more, or any more of a pleasure to read, or you know, I any yeah, any more I, of a positive experience <laughs> to read. I, I think I think I. I, I, you know, I enjoyed the language. I found it, you know, very crisp and uh, more more than dry. I would say it was crisp and straightforward, but that didn't, I, I enjoyed that because it was Murderbot's voice and that carried through the characterization. And of course, characterization and dialogue is like my jam. Um, well, there are certain, there are certain scenes where it works. Like I think some of the action scenes where, where Murderbot is like having a fight or is doing something right now in the moment. Like, I think it works for that because it, 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 it is clear, uh -huh. but it's when, it's when Murderbot is relating to us, like what the other characters are doing at the same time and why they have to do this at this time, because this is part of the plan. And basically get, getting us into like the, in, a very close sort of minutia of what the plan is, not just telling us what the plan is generally so we can follow the story and know when it goes wrong, but telling us like in minute detail, okay, Gerthen's going to be over here and he's going to be doing this. And then Mensa is going to be over here and she's going to be doing this. And this has to happen first. So this can happen. And it just, it, my eyes glaze over at a certain point And it's just like this, there's, there's a lot going on here <laughs> and it's not that much fun to read. Um, for you. So, for, yeah. Oh yeah. Obviously. Yes. For me. Yes. Yes. And I, I mean, because I mean, like I said, I, I enjoyed that part because a lot of it feels like Murderbot just sort of thinking through things and making sense of things. And, 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 and again, Murderbot, uh, just viewing it through Murderbot's perceptions. And I really got the sense of the awareness from the external cams and the feeds and those sorts of things that gave me, you know, that, that gave me that consistent reminder that this is not a human character. This is a character that receives information and perception, um, not extrasensorily, but in ways that we don't. And having that consistent reminder um, kind of normalized it. Like I got, I got used to it pretty quick, and I was able to just sort of go through it without, you know, without it really bogging me down or, mm -hmm. or making my eyes glaze, glaze over. It was just like do 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 do, and then this, and then this, and then that, and then that. Um, and it helps that it wasn't, to me, it never felt like it went on and on and on. Um, there was, there was that sort of a lot of exposition, but yeah. I think, uh, I think it, it kept, what kept it from dragging for me was th that it was in voice. And so that helped a lot. 255 AD, I mean, more is relative. I think it might have been more tempting, like, okay, at least I know where I'll fit in, what I'll do, but um, I don't think, I think it would have still resisted that, as in, yes, I, I don't, essentially, it would have, the, the, the issue would have been, I don't just want to do the same thing. What's the point? What's the point of going with you if it's just going to be the same as everywhere else? So it would have been right. reframed a different way, and we would have, I mean, plus, also, Murderbot does need to go off on its own so it can have its own adventures because so there can right. be more books so that we can make more money. And well, and also, I mean, and unless, have more stories. unless you just want all of the books to be about Murderbot and this particular group of humans, which I guess there's no reason why it couldn't have been that. But, you know, like like we've said before, like I, I know I've expressed this opinion in past episodes, like Murderbot is really the only really interesting character. I mean, some of the other humans are like Mensa obviously stands out from the other humans because of her relationship with Murderbot and how she sort of has a unique insight into him and a unique sort of awareness and sensitivity of, of, of Murderbot's needs. But isn't really that compelling of a character and none of the humans really are. Like the only, the only compelling character is Murderbot. So if you're doing more books, yeah, yeah, keep keep Murderbot, and Although Murderbot goes off and meets some other people. How slash if Gurathin's opinion of Murderbot changes? I guess if I mean if you're <laughs> like I personally don't really give a shit, but <laughs> I'm just I'm saying I, I am definitely more interested to see Murderbot interacting with new humans. Yeah, but. I mean, interacting with new humans or maybe interacting with other, you know, constructs 
in such a way that it kind of is stuck in the human role, you know, which I imagine it wouldn't be very comfortable with. Like it's having like sort of the human thoughts and feelings and thinking, wait a minute, we can't do that. And the other robots are like, why can't we do that? We're robots. You know what I mean? And Murderbot is like, but I'm not just a robot, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, so, and also, uh, I wasn't really blown over by the way the, the the way the plot wound up. Like the, it felt like they the story had been building to some kind of reveal about the evil survey team and who they really are or what they really want, and that just kind of wound up being, oh, they just want to do some illegal stuff and they don't want anybody to find out. Yeah, it was just money. Oh, oh okay. I mean, it it's just... an understand. It's an understandable motivation because that's the reason that a lot of people do a lot of stuff in the real world. But it's like in the story, it's like, oh no, they just wanted to mine some illegal stuff off. The it turns out there were people living on this planet before, and they wanted to steal. And, and some because shit. of that, and... they're not going to be allowed to just do whatever they want. Yeah, but they want to. They want to like... do whatever they want. They want the money. Yeah, and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess that's an explanation, but it feel it feels like a bit of an anticlimax after building up to it, you know, for most of the book. Oh, they're just criminals, just doing criminal stuff. Okay. You know. Of course, what if are you, you what enjoyed are you? Firefly more. What are we hmm? doing today? Uh crime. Oh, crime. Okay. Yeah. If I enjoyed Firefly more. That's what I said. If. If. So, yeah, I have... Uh, oh, boy. It's not even seven yet. Holy smokes. Um, well, you, I do yeah. have another book that I'm going to try to finish off first. And then on to Murderbot 2.0. Ha! Ha! So, speaking of, now that we're done with this, Steve, Whatever yes. will we do? Well, we do not have any, we, we have not really, we, we do not have another book on the horizon. Uh, yet. Yet. Uh, maybe we'll come up with one. We came up, I mean, you came up with this one and this was a, this was a good series, but we are going to do one more read away for the foreseeable future, which will be week after next, next Friday will be my ask away. And then Friday after that, we are going to do a, a, a read away standalone special, if you will. Uh, we are going to read not a book, but, but? A, sh but a short story, a classic little sci-fi short story written by Jerome Bixby that you may have heard of for being something other than a short story. It's called, It's a Good Life. And it was the basis for one of the all-time classic episodes of the original Twilight Zone. Wow. So, you knew this already. Is this you acting? <laughs> it's amazing that you should mention that, Steve. Say, is the Twilight Zone streaming anywhere? Oh, I see what we're doing. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, well, I mean... A couple years ago, the Twilight Zone was streaming everywhere. Now, apparently, it's really only streaming on Paramount Plus, at least here in the United States, perhaps over, you know, in the rest of the world, it's still streaming other places. But here in the U.S., it is currently only streaming on Paramount Plus. But if you are someone who watches along with us when we watch uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine on Trek Reluctantly, Deep Space Nine is now also only streaming on Paramount Plus in the United States. So if you've got Paramount Plus and you're able to watch along with that, you can also watch along on the Twilight Zone because here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, to read the It's a Good Life story and talk about it as a story like we have with Murderbot. And then we're going to do a watch along of the Twilight Zone episode. So it'll be just like we do for Trek Reluctantly. You're not, we're not going to show the episode in the live stream. We're both going to watch it on our own. And if you want to watch it along with us, you'll have to queue it up on your end and we'll work out the timing and we'll watch it at the same time. Um, but we're going to talk about the original story, which Dana has read and I have actually never read. And then we're going to watch the classic Twilight Zone episode that I have seen a billion times 
and that Dana has never seen. So it'll be sort of it, it'll, a it'll double be, header. It'll be it's a good life reluctantly. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to that. And if you've never in uh, I if you Google it, uh, it's a good life short story. It is available in a couple of different places for free. You can find copies of it. So if yep, you do not happen to. Place. Yeah. So if you do not happen to have a copy of it yourself, you can Google it and find it. And hopefully you can find it with no problem. And it's not really super long. Um, and yeah. Cool. That'll be so that'll be not next Friday, but Friday after next. The the read away. It's a good life. Watch along special. I'm looking forward to that. I'm actually I'm really more more than anything. I'm looking forward to watching an episode of the Twilight Zone with you because we've never watched any Twilight Zone together. And you, I think, have you ever seen any of the original Twilight Zone? I've never seen a full episode. I've seen like pieces of some of them. Well, you're going to see a whole one in two weeks and it's one of the better one of the best ones so hopefully you enjoy it well I really thank you hope Christian. i like it because if i don't and it's one of the better ones i'd be like that'll be really disappointing no pressure well but here's the thing about the twilight zone it's a very diverse show you know like just because you don't like one twilight zone episode doesn't mean you'll necessarily necessarily not like others you know it's like what so, i said in the video that i shot this afternoon like a book of short stories Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice thing about a book of short stories, if you're like, yeah, this was not so great, just be like, psh, 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 psh. let's try the next one. Although I will say, if you do not, if you find you do not like the particular authorial voice of Rod Serling, you might have a problem. <laughs> Even though even Rod Serling doesn't, he he doesn't personally write every single episode. Although he he is the writer of more of the episodes than any other individual writer on the show but even the other episodes that aren't actually written by him have a very similar voice have a serling-esque <laughs> voice um so if you don't like rod serling's style as a particularly as a writer of dialogue and as you know as obviously as a screenwriter you might not enjoy the twilight zone too much i happen to love it it's a very distinct writing style and if you if you watch more than a few episodes you'll probably clue into it like ah that's you can tell that it's a Rod Serling story when you just you listen to the people talk for a little bit. And you're like, OK, that's a Rod Serling story. Um, but that's the only thing I can think of that would make that would that would turn you off of the entire show, like on the basis of yeah. one episode. Yeah. So and 255 A.D., I have not seen The Man from Earth. No. And uh, Christian Ben Surd, Thanks for saying that. Hi, Steve. Love your Star Trek. Though I appreciate that very much. I'm glad you liked them, and I'm glad you joined us for the show. I hope you enjoyed it. And you Kane should like his videos. They're good. Kane20C asks, why does it always have to be a murder bot? Why never a hug bot? I mean... Well, they have other kinds of bots. I will just leave it at that. I think maybe murder bot eventually will become a hug bot. I think that's the, the logical endpoint of its story arc. There, there. Yeah, the last the last book it'll be the Murderbot Chronicles, but Murderbot is scratched out and Hugbot is like handwritten, you know, you know, over it to, you know. Are you satisfied with your care? <laughs> what? How robotic of you! Have you not Are... seen that? Oh, is that the fucking the the big like balloon robot? Yes. Yeah, no, I've never seen that. No. I'm a grown adult without children. Why would I have seen that? Because it's a good movie. What's it called? It's a it's a Pixar. Big one, right? Hero Six. Big Hero Six. I will I will make I will add it to my Disney watch list and I will make an effort to watch it. <laughs> which, um, which never watch. No, hey, no, that's not true. I watched uh, Marvel stuff on Disney. No, no, I watched Wally, -E, and I thought Wally -E was terrific. I watched um, Wreck It Ralph and found it grossly overrated. Did not really enjoy it. So I, I and I, so I, I added Wreck It Ralph and the sequel, Ralph Breaks the Internet, to my both to my watch list. After I watched the first one, I took the second one out. I said, I'm not watching that. That's you did watch, although at, at my best, you watched you watched Zootopia. Zootopia, and I liked Zootopia a lot too. Yeah. It's so good. I mean, I, the the Pixar that I have seen, I have really enjoyed. But it's just it's not something aside that I naturally. Aside from Wreck-It Ralph. Aside from Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, and and uh, 
I watched Lightyear, and I thought Lightyear was was excellent, and I did not get why people didn't like it. I was it's like, really interesting because you say different things about it. Sometimes, like you just said, excellent, but I swear, previously when we talked to you, you said it's a perfectly fine movie. I'm like, those are two very different judgments, as far as I'm concerned. I liked it. I liked it. I didn't think it was like a masterpiece, but I thought it was quite good and and clever and had some nice moments. Quite and good, I, clever, had some nice moments. Excellent. Really getting hung masterpiece. up. Masterpiece. I never said it was a masterpiece. No, I'm, I'm saying there's there's like there's like a whole spectrum. Quite good. Had some nice. Had some quite good moments. Excellent. Masterpiece. Like way over there. Master, yeah, if I called it a masterpiece, that means I really, really liked it. No, it is nowhere approaching a masterpiece, but... So, so it's it, no City Lights? Oh, God, no. <laughs> Lightyear? No. I don't know. No. I haven't seen it. It's, But I liked it, and and I I mean, as I said, because I, I tweeted about it. I said, what was everybody's problem with Lightyear? I thought it was pretty good, you know? Um, and, and it seems See? like... Pretty good. Oh Excellent. God. They're not the same it's just steve yes steve. yes precision matters i know it I, I it yes yes it matters it matters a great deal um anyway i said what was <laughs> i said what was everybody's problem with lightyear and from the responses i got it it seems as though it was as i suspected that the people who didn't like it it, it was a combination of um conservative culture warrior doofuses what? who who were upset either because tim allen didn't do the voice because tim allen is also a conservative culture warrior doofus um or that there were characters in it who were not white and at least one character in it who was gay and they just were outraged by the the reminder of the existence, the existence. of people of color of people of color and gay people um all or of a sudden was... i have i have a head cannon steve uh, okay for for light year that it was Chris Evans was the voice of, Bu of Lightyear, Chris Evans right? was the voice of Buzz Lightyear in this one, yes. Okay. So, Chris Evans is the... It, it's Chris Evans. Indeed. But the toy manufacturer could not afford to get Chris Evans. Yes. And I, I had the same thought. I had the same thought. And I thought maybe that's, that's, that's why... That's the universe reason for it. I thought, I thought maybe that's why they're pissed off. Because implicitly, it establishes Tim Allen as the cheap knockoff voice for Buzz. Yes! That is so funny. I love that. I love that headcanon. And I love yeah. that you came up with that independently as well. That's yeah, awesome. I thought of it. I thought I wonder that I wonder if that's why they're mad. Um but but also um uh the other the other group is nerds who just can't get past well, where does it fit in with Toy Story? You know? And to be fair, the the production company did uh, play into that by having a little title at the beginning of the movie saying basically this is the movie that the Buzz Lightyear toy was based on. Which, so which but that it makes it even more hilarious because like it tells you how it fits into Toy Story. Like it says so. Right, but so, but, but you know my so my, it, it, you know you know what you know what it's like. Didn't you guys watch the show? <laughs> but see i didn't like it because i feel like anything like that is a concession to the pedants and any concession to the pedants is too much for me this far and no farther like we make we make too many creative decisions for people like this already you know what i mean like we have a lot we have allowed we have must be drawn there we have yes. It's actually no. The line should have been drawn somewhere way back there about twenty years ago, but we're way past that point. Um, no, we we have allowed pedantic nerds who piss and moan and whine about every little inconsistency and continuity error to define way too much of popular culture and popular films and television because studios and filmmakers and such have gotten it into their heads like well if we just if we think of everything then we can make them happy and then they won't complain you will never make them happy they are incapable of experiencing joy stop making things for them let them complain about how this isn't the same as that and you forgot about this and what about that let them complain to each other until they're blue in the face it doesn't matter they don't matter they are not the audience for the most part to hell with them just make the best movie that you can make and that's what i and I, that's for the most part i think that's what they did with lightyear 
And that's what they should have just done. It said they said they should have said, look, this is a Buzz Lightyear movie. It's not based on the toy. It's based on Buzz as though he's an actual guy as an astronaut in space. And this is the adventure of Buzz Lightyear in this movie. And if anybody said, well, how does this fit in with Toy Story? That person should have been punched in the face. That's my solution to that problem. (laughs) Is that how you feel, Steve? That's how I feel. (laughs) I think Chris Evans should have punched that person in the face. He wouldn't have because he's too nice of a guy, but I think. (laughs) Go ahead. What what, what are you going to say? Do I get to say it now? Please, please. They need to read that book and ask themselves, does this spark joy? (laughs) And if not, they can just let go of it. Just let go. Just let go. And say, this has served me well before, but I don't need it. I'm going to just let go of it. Just Goodbye. let it go. Yes. <sighs> and take it from someone who knows a lot of trivia about stuff. The fact that you know a lot of trivia about stuff is not impressive and is of no value. And you should stop acting like the rest of us should treat it as such. So anyway. So a Wednesday? Yes, that's right. Wednesday we'll be back uh, on Trek Reluctantly to watch uh, the second to last episode of season two of Hilda. So uh-huh. we have we have two more episodes of Hilda and then the Hilda movie. And then I think that's it until they come. I think they are coming out with the season three, but I don't think it's out yet. So nope. um, and then, yeah, so there we go. And yeah, and we will be back. I will be back a week from tonight for my Ask Away. And you will be back on your channel a week from tomorrow for uh, Saturday 6. And then we'll be back here again two weeks from tonight for the It's a Good Life. Right away, where we will read the story. We'll, talk, well, we'll have already read the story. We'll talk about the story. And then we will and watch then... the episode. You should make popcorn. I, I got popcorn. I can make popcorn. It can be popcorn night instead of pizza it night. It can be popcorn night. I mean, because pizza night is Wednesday. Yeah, we Wednesday don't want to do. We, we yeah, you don't want to do too many pizza nights. It's, you can't have. No. You can't have Christmas every day. You know. That's way too many Jesus. That's way too many Jesuses. Oh, I was thinking, you know, capitalism. Stupid capitalism. I'm honestly surprised that people haven't tried that by now. I mean, we've already gotten to the point where we're, we they were releasing like a Star Wars movie every year. You know what I mean? Because they were like, screw it. Why not? <laughs> Saturating the market. What's that? <laughs> um, I'm surprised somebody hasn't, just, hasn't tried to be like, let's just do like Christmas a month. See how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well, also, let's not forget. Yeah, let's not yeah. forget charity links. Very important. Look through those. To see if there's yes. any way that if you have the opportunity to not only you can you can donate, but also don't forget you can... Um, you know, spread some of those messages around through social media and just encourage people to, you know, if they Absolutely. have the, if you don't have the means and other people do say, Hey, here's ways that you can help. Spread um, the building word. community is always super, super help. Yep. Super, yep. Super Charity links dot page linked in the description. Also don't forget Dana's Patreon, patreon.com slash Dana Cole dares and Dana's I just, YouTube in page. Fact, that's what I, th- that's what I thought got me my, uh, you know, content warning was because I was doing this one. YouTube usually doesn't care about, Especially well, obviously, they didn't care about this one. That's but that's what I thought. That's it was. true. That and was, was the spammy like, link. Yeah. What in the world did I say last Saturday live? You and your hate speech. You know, you you go on that live stream every other Saturday, and you're just you're spewing filth and garbage. And I know. Hate I know. It's shocking. I'm talking about. I'm talking about. You know, the regrowth of coral. And oh no. No, that's don't, don't, hey, don't start talking about, don't start talking about that on my channel. I don't, I don't want you giving me a community strike talking about coral regrowing. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> All the anti-coral people, the anti-coral people are going to descend and be like, no. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, youtube.com slash Dana Cole dares for Dana's YouTube videos. Watch, leave her comments, right? You love comments. I do. I love comments. And uh, I will be back doing videos 
like I usually do. And if you want to support my channel, you can go to patreon.com slash Steve Shives and become a patron or click the join button right here on the YouTube channel to become a channel member. And I appreciate the support from all of Steve, you. I, can't... I couldn't do. Hmm? I can't decide. Decide what? Well, you know, I really like potatoes. Indeed. But I also really like comments. Oh, which do you like better? I see. I don't know. I think I know. What do you think? Potatoes. See, I was just thinking comments because I was like, if somebody said, well, I didn't leave you a comment, but I brought potatoes, I'd be like, couldn't you have just left a comment? But if somebody's like, well, I didn't bring any potatoes. I forgot and I left them home. But I left you a comment. I'd be like, oh, come on. Are you seriously telling me that if you were out in public uh -huh. and someone recognized you from your YouTube channel and walked up to you and said, I watched your video yesterday. I thought it was amazing. I love all your videos. And you said, oh, really? Did you leave a comment? And they said, well, no, but, and then they whipped out like a delicious potato dish and said, I brought this for you. You would not be thrilled. You would still be crestfallen about the, the lack of a comment. Okay. Here's the thing. You're assuming that I wouldn't already know that they didn't leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be, you'd be like, I didn't see no comments on that video. I wouldn't where, where say that. Comment? I'd be like, oh, thanks. Well, next time, just leave me a comment and tell me so. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for the potatoes. Bye. <laughs> so you, you get out. You, I would you, still you, take the potatoes. Are you kidding? They're right be, there, Steve. You'd be leaving with those potatoes. You'd be like, thanks a lot. Leave a comment next time. But you well, think I like comments better than potatoes. That, and that is saying something, folks. Because you love potatoes. But. Go ahead. I think I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. You know where I'm going with this. If they said, I just, I, I, I felt so uncomfortable. I couldn't leave a comment like in public like that. It was really weird. But I baked you this pie. Yeah, like, that's what I, that's where I knew you were. <laughs> That's where I was going to go next. I was going to ask, I was going to do one of those bits where I ask a question that I already know the answer to. Because mm -hmm. I was going to say, what if it was between comments and pie? And like, that's like, not even. You don't, comments, you don't even, potatoes, pie. Right. You, you don't even have to think about that. Uh-uh. <laughs> pie might. Ooh, now that's a really tough one. Potato pie? No, no. No. Pie versus Steve Shives. You know what? Well, let's not you go there. What? Let's not go there. We'll, we'll you, just leave no, that one alone. Listen, you know what? If if I lose out to pie, I think I can live with that. <laughs> I understand. I don't, I don't necessarily like it, but I get it. Like, I respect it, you know? All right. I, mean, I think that's a great note to end on. Pie, like, of oh. <laughs> it's you like, know it's how fucking, I feel about pie. It's pie. It's pie. I like pie, too. I can't really be I mad, mean, you know? Well, like, I mean, really, who doesn't? Who doesn't like pie? Other than Frodo. Frodo doesn't count anymore. He's dead. Well, Fro Frodo's dead inside. Exactly. That's why after he doesn't his, like pie or potatoes. Gosh. After, after his incredible journey. <laughs> and I was dead inside after watching three movies about it. Hey, let's wrap this up, shall we? <laughs> We've been trying to wrap it up. I know. It just keeps going. All right, we're gonna we're we're gonna wrap it up for real now. We will be back in two weeks for the It's a Good Life show. We'll be back on Wednesday for Trek Reluctantly Watching Hilda. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and have a good weekend. Thank you, uh, Simulo. You have a good weekend too. Everybody have a good weekend, and we'll Please. see you next time. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.